Mathematical Literacy, Lesson 17. Topic, Measurement Area. Turn to Lesson 17 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson includes an individual activity, formative assessment, with summative assessment. Integration. This lesson integrates with Hospitality Studies, Mathematics, Engineering, Geography, Physical Science and Life in general. Prior Knowledge. This lesson builds on what you learned in Grade 9 Mathematics. Lesson Overview. In this lesson you will focus on the measurement of area. Hi, I'm Arnav, and we're back with another of our lessons based on the Grade 10 curriculum for mathematical literacy. Lesson by lesson, we try to help you develop the knowledge and skills that you need in order to make a success of this subject. And by making a success of the subject, you'll find that you're better prepared to participate in and contribute to the world in which we live, a world that is defined by numbers. In today's lesson, we turn our attention to learning outcome three, the learning outcome that deals with, among other things, measurement. In this lesson, we will focus on the measurement of area. Throughout this lesson, we will address the assessment standards of learning outcome three, shape, space, and measurement, which expects that learners should be able to measure using appropriate instruments, to estimate and calculate physical quantities, and to interpret, describe, and represent properties of and relationships between two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional objects in a variety of orientations and positions. The world in which we live is made up of objects with different sizes, different shapes, and made from a range of different materials. From the shirts we wear, to the houses we live in, to the food we eat. We have to be able to quantify these things. How far is it from our home to our place of work? How much material is needed to make that shirt or dress? How much cement is needed to build the house in which we live? How much petrol do we need to complete a journey? And how much milk do we need to feed a family? All of those things have to be calculated. And to do so, we use measurements. We're typically concerned with three different kinds of measurements, distance, area, and volume. In today's lesson, I want to concentrate on area. We define area as the number of square units of a certain size needed to cover the surface of a figure. The easiest way to make sense of that definition is to think of a piece of grid paper, like the one I've got over here. Now, say I wanted to know the area of this shape, then I'd do the following. We'd start by simply putting down the shape, and then we take our grid paper and place it over it. Now remember that we defined area as the number of square units of a certain size needed to cover the surface of a figure. How many of these squares are needed to cover the surface of that figure? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 complete squares and a range of parts of a square. If I wanted to have a more accurate sense of the area of this shape, I could change the grid paper from the grid paper with the larger squares to grid paper with smaller squares. And once again, I could start counting how many squares are needed to cover the shape. But even though I've gone to a grid with smaller squares, there are still squares in which only part of the square is needed to cover the shape. At this point, I might begin estimating and saying that's a half, that's less than a half, that's more than a half, and so on, till eventually I have a sense of the area of my shape. Because it would be impractical to spend our lives walking around with pieces of grid paper to use every time we wanted to work out the area of a shape, we need to become more efficient. And we do so by developing a rule or a formula that we can use to calculate the area of a shape. The basis of that calculation, however, remains the square unit. And here I've got a number of squares. Let's see how we can use those 
to develop a formula for area. I'm going to use these squares here to make a number of different shapes, simply by placing the squares next to each other. 9 and 10. What I've done here is I've created three very different shapes using my squares. Now, if we think of each of those squares as being one square unit, then each of those three different shapes have all got exactly the same area, 10 square units. Before we get carried away with all of these strange shapes, let's slow down and begin to focus on the simplest of all shapes, the rectangle. Here I've made a rectangle with exactly 24 squares. Now what I want you to notice is that this rectangle has got three dimensions. It's got the length of this side and the length of that side. Now of course you could say there's also the length of that side and the length of the fourth side, but one property of a rectangle is that the opposite sides are equal. So the length of this side and the opposite side will be exactly the same. To summarize, we've got one side, another side, and then we have a third dimension, the area, 24 square units. Now, because it's hard to talk about this length and that length, we, by convention, call one of the sides the length and we call the other side the breadth. And just because the breadth is the short side this time and the length is the long side this time, it doesn't always have to be that way. It's quite possible for us to call the longer side the breadth and the other one the length. As I'm sure you can imagine, there are other rectangles that I can also make with 24 squares. Let's try a few. Here I've made two rectangles, each with exactly 24 squares. As I said earlier, each of these rectangles have got three dimensions, their length, their breadth, and their area. The length, the breadth, and the area. Let's record the length, breadth, and area for each of these rectangles. The length of this rectangle is one, two squares, or actually two units. The breadth of this rectangle is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve units. And the area is equal to two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 24 units squared. Now let's repeat that for the other rectangle. The other rectangle has a length of 1, 2, 3 units, a breadth of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units, and an area, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24 units squared. 